from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for ling English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is Episode 7, Segment 1. Today's episode is an introduction to passenger trains. The image on my sweatshirt is that of the Empire Builder, a passenger train established by the Great Northern Railroad. Today, it's still run by Amtrak as the Empire Builder. It's an example of a passenger train, the subject of this video clip. Watch and enjoy. America still has passenger trains. Passenger trains carry people, passengers, from one place to another. In the United States, most passenger trains are operated by Amtrak. This passenger train is arriving at Eugene, Oregon. This train has a name and a special car. The name is the Coast Starlight, and this special car is called the Parlor Car. It's only found on this train, which carries passengers from Seattle to Los Angeles. This car is a place for sleeping car passengers to relax and meet other travelers. The windows are made for scenery, and food is also served here. Some passenger trains carry people short distances. This train in California is called the Capital Corridor. It carries people to Sacramento and nearby cities. There's no dining car and no sleeping cars. This train is a partnership between Amtrak and the state of California. People who take the train instead of driving save gas, reduce pollution, and can relax or read instead of driving on crowded freeways. The Coast Starlight is an example of a long-distance train. As it pulls out of Klamath Falls, let's look at the cars. Behind the two locomotives, we see a baggage car. The cars behind that are the sleeping cars. There's usually two or three sleeping cars on this train. Passengers in the sleeping cars are considered first class, which means they get their meals for free on the train. Sleeping cars range in size from a family bedroom to a small roomette, room for two. Next is the parlor car, the one we described earlier, followed by the dining car. The lower level of the dining car has a kitchen, and that's where they prepare fresh food for the passengers. The dining car is another good place to meet other passengers on the train. Behind the diner is an observation car with a snack bar downstairs. The cars that follow are all coaches with large seats but no special sleeping facilities. There is room to sleep in the seats though and I've been on many trips where I've slept in the coach. Passengers are not allowed in the locomotives. Only the engineers are allowed there. Long distance trains are pulled by two diesel electric locomotives. They're controlled by two people in the cab in the front locomotive, the engineer and a fireman. The baggage car is also off limits to passengers. Amtrak crew members put checked bags here unloading them at the station or transferring them to a connecting train. 
Baggage is also called luggage. It refers to suitcases carrying clothes and other items for passengers. Here, a crew member is loading suitcases into the baggage car. The sleeping car has private compartments where passengers can lie down and sleep. In this small room, or roomette, the top bunk is pulled up for headroom, and the bottom bunk turns into two seats for travel during the day. Passengers are welcome to eat and drink on the train. But the best place to eat and drink on the train is the dining car. It's a very busy place with exciting passengers eager to share their stories of travel. Waiters and waitresses take your order while the kitchen downstairs prepares the food. Food in the dining car is very good quality and expensive, but sleeping car passengers have already paid for their meal when they rent the sleeping car room, so they don't pay again in the diner. From the diner, we enter the viewing car. No matter which seat they're assigned, passengers are free to move throughout the train or to stake out a seat in the viewing car. Note the curved windows at the ceiling help passengers see up canyon walls and at towering mountains. Downstairs is a snack bar. This is where you can buy food and eat it at one of the tables. And if no one's eating at the table, passengers can play games there. This is also called the lounge car. Moving back from the viewing car, Passengers enter the coaches. A coach is the most basic level of passenger service, but the seats are large and comfortable. You can even sleep in them. The coach isn't as comfortable or as private as a sleeper, but the coach passengers travel just as fast as those in first class and enjoy the same scenery. There are usually three or four coaches on a long distance train. Do you remember what this car is called? What about this one? Passengers board trains at stations. This Amtrak station is in Portland, Oregon. It's served by the Coast Starlight and other trains. Here we see a regional train called the Cascades. Passenger trains take people from place to place, but they also feature gorgeous scenery, like this sunset in the Pacific Ocean. Passengers also get to see mountains, like Mount Shasta in Northern California, and river canyons, like this one in Colorado. Amtrak has been carrying passengers across America for 40 years. I hope you get to be on an Amtrak train. If you have a ticket, just go to an Amtrak station and listen for the conductor. Then hop on when you hear him call, all aboard. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is a good time to write down how much of the preceding video clip you understood. Make an estimate approximately what percentage of the words did you understand. Add the episode number, number seven, and the date. We'll compare with previous episodes when we return.